Hey guys, we are back and we are going to do another video today. This time we're going to start talking about degenerate perturbation theory. So before we talked about um, non-degenerate perturbation theory in which all the eigenstates, they had different energies. And that was pretty easy. We did a couple examples with that and we just saw the theory behind it. But now we're going to look at degenerate perturbation theory. And before we start looking at that theory, I just want to give us a quick example of why we need this theory. Okay, so let's let's get into it. All right, so consider this example. We have our unperturbed Hamiltonian H0, and let's say H0 is just 1001. So it's just the identity. Now immediately we see that our energies are 1 and 1, and they're degenerate, which means that they're the same. We can also say that they have repeated eigenvalues, um, one and the same. Okay, and our perturbation delta H, let's say it's going to be equal to 0, 1, 1, 0. So it's just a Pauli matrix. All right, so as I said, E1 equals, so the unperturbed energies, E1 equals E2, and it's just equal to 1. That's pretty obvious. And also, we can say that our eigenstates, call it 1, 0. We can say that our first, whoops, we can say our first eigenstate is just 1, 0, right? And we can say our second eigenstate is just 0, 1. These are just the eigenvectors of our unperturbed Hamiltonian. Okay, so let's say now we want to compute our first order energy corrections. From time independent perturbation theory, I mean, sorry, from uh, non degenerate perturbation theory, so non degenerate perturbation theory, uh, the first order correction E11 would just be equal to delta H11, right? And this is just equal to 10 delta H10. And then if we compute this, It'll give us 1, 0 times, let's see, delta H, 0, 1, 1, 0, times 1, 0. And then let's look, take a look at this. So this guy is going to give me a 0. This guy is going to give me 1. This, this whole thing is going to turn out to be 0. Another way to see this is that this uh, matrix element, delta H, 1, 1, is just this entry in delta H, right? It's the first row, first column, which is zero. Similarly, E2, the first order, order correction to the second energy, is delta H22. Two, two. And by a similar argument, if you want to just multiply it out, or if you just look by inspection from here, it's also zero. So we see that our first order energy corrections are actually zero. But in reality, if we look at our total if we look at our total um, Hamiltonian, it will be, what would it be? It would be 1, 1, let's say there's a, it will be 1 lambda, lambda 1, right? And then if you actually do the analysis, you find the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues come out to be, so E1 of lambda is actually 1 plus lambda, and E2 of lambda is 1 minus lambda. Uh, you could do this. It's, it's a pretty straightforward exercise. I encourage you to do it, but that's what you get. And the eigenvectors come out to be um, 1 over radical 2, 1, 1, and 1 over radical 2, 1, negative 1. Okay, so we w there's a, a lot of problems here. First problem, we see that the first order energy correction is 0, but in reality... It's definitely not zero, right? It's actually one, right? Similarly, um, okay, well, that's basically the main problem. So if you, we need to think about what happened and what, 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 what went wrong here. And the key to this, uh, the key to finding out this is that you have to remember from linear algebra that for repeated eigenvalues, you can construct any linear combination of basis vectors and that will be an eigenvector with the same energy. So for example, if these are my two basis vectors, right? 
then I can construct a vector, let's call it v, that's c1 times 1, 0, plus c2 times 0, 1, and this will also be an eigenvector of the Hamiltonian with the same energy. And why? It's because the energies are the same. So when you plug this guy in, you will get the same energy. And this is the key result that makes degenerate perturbation theory different from non-degenerate perturbation theory. And then you can see from here as well that the actual eigenvectors of our system are going to be specific C1s and C2s, right? In this case, C1 is equal to 1 over radical 2, and it's equal to C2 as well. So basically what adding the perturbation does is fixes these constants, okay? So now that we see this catastrophe, let's get to the, de the general case, okay? I hope that made sense. Um, all right, anyways, so now non-degenerate perturbation theory. We have, let's say we have eigenstates of the unperturbed Hamiltonian, and we're going to label it like this. It's going to be 0, 0. This is going to be the first eigenstate, the ground state you can call it. Then we'll have, let's say, 1, 0. And then we're going to have 2, 0, and this will keep going, dot, dot, dot. All the way until, and then just, sorry, just for a notation, we're going to call P0. We're going to call P0 the non-degenerate non-degenerate subspace, non-degenerate eigenstate. That just means that any P0 is going to be, is going to have a different energy, okay? So we're going to have all these um, eigenstates where they're non-degenerate, and then we're going to hit the first, uh, I'll make it in a different color, we're going to hit the first um, degenerate state. And the first de degenerate state we're going to label as N0, 0. zero n0 zero, 0 so this refers to the first degenerate eigenstate and then let's say we have another degenerate eigenstate is going to be n0 1 right and then let's say we have another one is going to be n0 2 and so on um, for a general one we're going to have n0 k and so on okay so these are our degenerate sub degenerate eigenstates degenerate eigenstates so i, I hope that uh, notation makes sense if not just rewind it and just watch it one more time but it, in summary these are our non-degenerate eigenstates 0 1 2 3 4 p for a general one and then we hit n 0 and n can be like, it could be like 15. It could be the 15th state is the first degenerate eigenstate. And then once we hit 15, we have a string of degenerate eigenstates. And let's say that we have n, capital N, degenerate eigenstates. Okay? n degenerate eigenstates. Now, we need to look at the, the, the spaces that we're dealing with here. So our total Hilbert space and Hilbert space we write as H. Our total Hilbert space, we're going to write it as V, and then direct sum with Vn. And this V, this is, this is pretty important actually, so I'm just going to box it. This V right here is going to be the um, non-degenerate, non-degenerate space, non-degenerate subspace rather, to be more precise. And then this Vn here, it refers to the generate subspace. The generate subspace. Okay, so the stage is set. We have a bunch of states that are non-degenerate, and they fall into this category of V, hat. And then we have degenerate eigenstates, which make their own subspace, Vn. And this lowercase n refers to the number of degenerate eigenstates. For example, if n equals 4, if we have four degenerate eigenstates, then our degenerate subspace would be v2. Okay, that, that's just some bookkeeping. Anyways, so now we want to move on to the problem. What are we actually going to do? Obviously, we want to calculate the first order corrections, but how do we set it up? How do we set it up? All right, so first I'm going to write down the Schrodinger equation. 
So Schrodinger equation. And then we'll look into the details. So the Schrodinger equation is going to be this. H of lambda times n k of lambda equals e of lambda, e and k of lambda. That's important. And then n k of lambda. OK. So what does this mean? Well, from before, let me pick a different color here. From before, this labels the degenerate eigenstate, degenerate eigenstate, right? Where n refers to the location of the first degenerate eigenstate, and k refers to which degenerate eigenstate we're looking at. We can have n of them, capital N, remember? OK. And if we expand this guy out, we're going to have n k lambda is nothing more than n0, so first order, plus lambda n1 plus lambda squared. Actually, I'll just write plus dot dot dot. Right? It's, it's the familiar Taylor expansion that we had from before in powers of lambda. But e n k is a little more subtle. e n k is a little more subtle. e n k of lambda are going to be our energies. And note that the first one is just going to be n, e n 0. Because this is very important, you have to understand this, that the unperturbed energies are all the same. So if we have, let's say, n degenerate eigenstates, they'll all have the same energy, e n 0. Okay? But, but the first energy correction we hope that it's not going to be the same. That's what we hope. We hope it's not going to be the same. And what this physically means is that if we start out with like n states, they're all going to split. And they're all going to have different energies. So we call this a splitting of energies. And this is what we want. Because when we add our perturbation, we want the energies to split. And when the energies split, that means we did our job properly. But sometimes, on very rare occasions, the energies won't split. And then we're going to have to do something completely different. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So this is very important. We need to label the first order correction with a K. Because every different degenerate eigenstate can have a different energy to first order correction. And then we'll have plus lambda squared en K2 plus dot dot dot. OK. So that's the general setup here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do what we always do. And what do, what do we always do? We expand. So let's do that. All right. So h of lambda is nothing more than h0 plus lambda delta h times, and now we're going to have n0 k plus lambda and 1 k plus dot, dot, dot equals e n0 remember no label no k label plus lambda e n k1 plus dot 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 and then this is all multiplied by n0 k plus lambda and 1 k plus dot 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 okay so that's that's the problem and now we have to collect orders of lambda just like we did before so first things first Lambda zero order lambda zero, and this is this is pretty easy. We just have h zero here, n zero here, and we have e n zero and n zero. So it's just going to be h zero minus e n zero, and this is all times n zero k equals zero. And as before, we we see that this is just a Schrodinger equation for the um, unperturbed states, and this is trivially satisfied, right? Same argument as before, trivially satisfied. This is just the Schrodinger equation for the unperturbed states. Now for the first order correction, let me use a different color. How about dark pick? Lambda 1. Okay, so lambda 1, we're going to have this guy and this guy, right? We're going to have this guy and this guy. That's lambda 1. Uh, we're going to have this guy, this guy, and lastly, this guy 
and that guy. Okay, so you can group them together. I'll do it for you here. It's going to give us H0 minus EN0. And this is all times N1. Okay. And then this is going to be equal to ENK1 minus delta H times N0. Okay. Okay. So that's nice. Can we work with this? Sure we can. Same procedure as before. We're going to hit it from the left with two different things. First, we're going to hit it from the left with P0, where P refers to the non-degenerate state, right? So we're going to hit it from the left with that. We're also going to hit it from the left with N0L. And what's N0L? N0L refers to the same degenerate eigenstates, but L is just refers to a specific, L specific um, state within degenerate uh, space. So remember we said before that we have n of these degenerate states. We're going to have this, 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 this. We have n of them. And they all have the same energies. So L refers to one of them that's fixed. It could be the third one, for example. And K refers to, again, another one that's fixed. So that could be K. It just refers to which eigenstate we're dealing with. Okay, pretty pretty simple. And then again, P can refer to any other state that's non-degenerate. So this could be P, for example. And this could be Q. The, these labels just refer to um, which state we're dealing with. When I first learned perturbation theory, this was very confusing to me. Like, what's this P, L, Q, N? But it just refers to a specific eigenstate. Okay? Just that's all it refers to. So first let's hit it with N0L. And what happens when we hit it with N0L? Let me just write it out real quick. So we have H0 minus EN0 times N1. And then this is equal to N0L times EN1. Whoops. ENK1 minus delta H N0K. Okay, so let's look at the left hand side first. When we act on when we act on N0L with the Hamiltonian, th this guy is just an eigenstate of the original Hamiltonian. So we're just gonna get N0L multiplied by the energy, right? And then we're going to have EN0 minus EN0, which is going to cancel to give a total of 0. Very similar to non-degenerate perturbation theory. So we're going to have 0 equals, and then here, let's see. Well, ENK is just a constant. We can pull it out. And then we're going to have N0L, N0K. And remember that these two, as I just explained, these two refer to different eigenstates. If L equals L does not equal K. But if L equals K, then they're the same, and they're normalized, so it'll just be equal to 1. So show yourselves that this is the same thing as delta LK, right? When L equals K, they're normalized, so it's just 1. But when L does not equal to K, sorry, when L does not equal to K, they're orthogonal because they form the basis. So it's 0, and that's the delta function. And then we're going to have... Sorry, I forgot this E and K. And then this matrix element, which I'm going to write as delta H, N, L, N, K. Okay? And you can see that because this, from the left, we have N um, colon L. And then from the right, we have N semicolon K. So this is just a shorthand notation for the matrix element. So, uh, lo and behold, we get this astonishing result that um, delta LK ENK1 equals delta H NL NK. And this is a really important result, and this is going to be the, the focus of our next video interpreting this result. 
So for now, this is already kind of long video. I'm going to leave it off here. Um, wrap, your heads around, wrap your head around this result for a second, and we'll look into it much more later. For now, I'll just give you a little um, insight about it. Since this is there's a delta, uh, there's a chronic root delta here, this is going to mean that delta H, our perturbation, is going to have to be diagonal in the non-degenerate subspace. Okay? So we'll get into that next video.